Hey everybody, welcome back to Life in Room 27. I'm Miss Robinson and I'm here today with another math tutorial video for you guys. So today we are going to be looking at lesson 2.3 and lesson 2.3 is division with two digit divisors. Now, I'm going to go ahead and be totally honest in this video. This is probably one of the more frustrating lessons for students as well as parents because this lesson is strictly based on using diagrams to divide. And this is one of those lessons where I am going to force students to use this particular strategy on their homework tonight. And it's just because I know there's a couple of test questions in which you have to be able to read one of these diagrams and interpret it or you may be asked to create one. So for tonight's homework, you're gonna have to use the strategy that I show you, and then after that, it will become an option for you. If you have other division problems that come up in the future, you can either use this strategy if you absolutely love it, um, but if you'd like to use just a more traditional method, you can do that as well. So everybody just hang tight in this one, stay positive, um, and I'm gonna flip the camera around and then we'll go over some example videos, okay? See you guys in a second. Okay, before we get into an actual problem from today's lesson, I wanna show you the pieces that we're gonna be using in our diagram and make sure we're all on the same page as to what these pieces represent. So anytime you see me draw a square, know that that square is 100. Anytime you see me draw one of these sticks, know that, that stick represents a 10. Anytime you see me draw a dot, know that, that dot represents a one. These are just images of place value pieces. So this is a hundred, this is a 10, this is a one. So we just need to keep that in mind because these are the pieces that we're gonna be using. Now that we have that in place, let's look at our first example. Let's all take a deep breath because I know this is probably one of the more frustrating lessons. So now that we have an understanding of the pieces that we're gonna be using in this diagram and the values they represent, we're gonna go ahead and solve this problem 180 divided by 15. So the first thing that you're gonna do in these problems is you're gonna take your dividend and you're gonna diagram just the dividend. Just diagram it to show how much or what are we dividing. So if it's 180, I'm gonna draw a square because that represents 100 and I'm gonna draw eight sticks. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, because that represents 80. So here's 180. Once I've drawn my inventory, I like to draw a line underneath that so that I know one half of where I'm working is my inventory. This bottom half is how I'm taking that inventory and breaking it up into groups of 15. So the first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and bring down my square because I know that that square represents 100 and I know that if I'm dealing with 100, I have 10 sticks. There's 10 of these in there. So I've already created groups of 10. The best thing to do is think of or look at your diagram going horizontally. So here's row one of 10, row two of 10. So there's 10 rows there that represent 100 all together. So I'm gonna cross this out because I've used that piece. Now I have these pieces left here and they all have to be used. And I know that I'm trying to create as many groups of 15 as possible. So I know this is a group of 10, so now I'm gonna make this, that's now a group of 11. I'm gonna cross that out. If I put another one, now I have a group of 12. I'm gonna cross that out. I want a group of 13, crossing that out. Remember, I'm trying to get to 15. Here's 14, cross that out. And here's 15, cross that out. So I've created 10 groups of 15 here. Now I still have all these pieces left. And so the question becomes, okay, what can I do now? Well, I can draw another stick down here, cross that out, and then I can go, well, if I think about what I know about place value and I know this is 10, I know I can exchange one of these 10s for 10 of these dots. So I'm gonna go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10. And then I'm gonna take that one 10 that I put there 
and I need one, two, three, four, five of those dots that I just regrouped. So I'm gonna put one, two, three, four, five. And I'm gonna cross out the five that I use. One, two, three, four, five. Okay. Now I still have pieces up in my inventory. So here's a 10. I'm gonna put that 10 here because I, I can't go past 15 when I go across. That's why I'm putting them down at the bottom. So there's 10. I'm gonna cross that piece out because I just used it. And then I need five of these dots. And luckily, one, two, three, four, five, I have five of them. So I'm gonna put one, two, three, four, five. And cross out what I just used. One, two, three, four, five. Your diagram is done, but now you have to figure out, okay, my diagram is done, but what does that say my answer is? So here you can say, okay, I know this was 10 groups of 15 or 10 rows of 15. So that's 10 plus you made two more rows of 15 down there. So that's two, which is telling me that my answer is 12. 180 divided by 15 is 12 based on this diagram that I just created. Now I want to make sure, so I'm going to check my answer. So I'm going to take 12. I'm going to multiply it by 15 because that was my divisor. And if I'm correct, it'll match and it'll equal my dividend. So let's do 12 times 15. 5 times 2 is 10, 5 times 1 is 5, plus 1 is 6. I'm putting my placeholder there because now I'm dealing in the tens place. 1 times 2 is 2, 1 times 1 is 1. Now I'm going to add 0, 6 plus 2 is 8, 1 plus nothing is 180, and smiley face, this matches my dividend up there so I know I'm correct. Here's the second example. We're going to take 165 divided by 11. So in this example, we're trying to create groups of 11. So the first thing that we want to do is we're going to draw our inventory pieces or our game pieces. So that represents 100. I need six sticks. One, two, three, four, five, six, and five dots. One, two, three, four, five. And this is 160. Then I'm going to draw a line to represent the separation between my inventory or my game pieces and my actual diagram. So I know I want groups of 11, so I'm going to go ahead and bring down my 100 piece because I know that's 10 groups of 10 there. So that's 10 going that way. And I know that I only can have 11 in a group. So I can go ahead and add one there. So, and actually in this one, sorry, we're gonna look going this way. So there's 10, 11. And I wanna stop here to say sometimes, depending on what you're dividing, sometimes it's easier for me to look at it going horizontally. And sometimes it's easier for me to look at it going uh, vertically. And in this particular example, it's gonna be a little bit easier for you to see it when you're looking at it vertically. So here's a group of 10 and that makes 11. So I'm gonna go ahead and cross that piece out. Here's another group of 10, but then I need 11. Cross that piece out and that piece. Here's another group of 10 that makes 11. Cross that out and that out. Here's another group of 10 and then that makes 11. Cross that out and that out. Here's another group of 10 and that makes 11. Cross that out and that one out. And there's another group of 10, and that makes 11. Cross that out and that out. So then you're gonna ask yourself, okay, that's great, but how do I read that? You're gonna remember that this represents 10. Here's 10 groups of 11, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 groups of 11. So that tells you that your answer to 165 divided by 11 should be 15. You're gonna check your answer by multiplying 15 times 11. One times five is five. One times one is one. Make sure to include your placeholder or you can use partial products if you want. One times five is five. 
one times one is one, add, bring down your five, one plus five is six, and one plus nothing is one, and that matches my dividend, so I know I'm correct. We are dividing 143 divided by 11. So first things first, you wanna go ahead and draw your inventory or your game pieces. So that's 100. I need four sticks, one, two, three, four, and I need three dots, one, two, three. That's 143. The next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna separate my game pieces or my inventory from the diagram that I'm gonna be creating. So I'm gonna draw a line and I'm gonna tell myself I'm trying to create as many groups of 11 as possible. So first I'm gonna bring down my square because I know that that is 10 groups of 10. So I'm gonna put a 10 there and then I'm gonna cross it out because you wanna make sure you're crossing out as you use pieces so you can keep track of what's left to be used. I'm gonna bring down one stick and that is my first group of 11. So I'm gonna go ahead and cross that out. Then, because I can't have more than 11 going across, I'm gonna start adding pieces here. So I'm gonna put another stick there, that's 10. The dot makes it 11, so I'm gonna cross out that piece that I just used and that one. I'm gonna put another stick there that represents 10 and a little dot that makes 11. Notice I crossed them out as soon as I used them. Then I'm gonna put another stick there, cross that out, and a dot, cross that out, and that makes 11. So here I know I added three more groups of 11. Then I'm gonna add those two numbers together, 10 plus three is 13, and that tells me that I believe my answer to 143 divided by 11 is 13. I'm gonna check my work. 13, which is my quotient, times 11, which is my divisor. One times three is three. One times one is one. Put your placeholder. Of course, you can use partial quotients to do this if you wanted to. One times three is three. One times one is one. Then I'm gonna add three. One plus three is four. One plus nothing is one. Smiley face, because that matches my dividend up there, so I know I am correct. Let me see if I can squeeze in one more before my battery dies. In this example, we're going to divide 168 divided by 14. First things first, we're gonna draw our game pieces. 100, I need six sticks. One, two, three, four, five, six, and eight dots. One two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, okay? I'm gonna draw a line to separate my game pieces from my actual diagram. And I'm gonna tell myself, I'm trying to make as many groups of 14 as possible. So I'm gonna go ahead and bring down my 100 piece, because I know that's 10 groups of 10. And then I'm gonna say, but I need 14, so I'm gonna put, whoa, I almost forgot. I'm gonna cross out the piece I just brought down. I'm gonna put one, two, three, four, six there. Cross out one, two, three, four. That's as much as I can do going across because my groups cannot be bigger than 14. So now I'm gonna be adding my pieces down here. So I'm gonna put one stick there because that represents 10. Cross that out, one, two, three, four dots there because that now gives me 14. Cross one, two, three, four of the dots out. I'm gonna take that stick, put it down there. That's 10, cross it out. And I need four dots to make that 14. One, two, three, four, cross those out. All my pieces are used and now I have to interpret this diagram. Well, that was a group of 10 there. These were two new groups that I created. I'm gonna add those two together. 10 plus two is 12. So right now I'm saying my answer to 168 divided by 14 is 12. I'm gonna check my answer by taking 12, the quotient, times 14, the divisor. Four times two is eight. 
four times one is four, placeholder. One times two is two, one times one is one. Add those up, eight, six, one. Smiley face, because this matches my dividend. All right, we're back, and I thought today would be the perfect day to add my little one, Genesis, into the video, because I know this lesson can be kind of stressful for some, frustrating for others, and we all know cute little dogs like her make life even better and take all of our troubles away. So she made a little cameo, plus she wanted to show you guys her new birthday collar. She's modeling it right now for you. Um, her birthday was a few days ago and she turned 10 years old. So she wants to show you that right there. Isn't it cute? But anyway, I just want to make sure you guys understand that for tonight's homework, you do need to use the strategy of drawing a diagram to divide your problems because you will be coming across some problems that involve that on your quizzes and your tests. And I need to make sure that you understand how to read and interpret them and that you also know how to create them. But after tonight, you're free to use whichever strategy that you choose to. Um, I hope this video was helpful for you guys and I hope it wasn't too frustrating and too stressful for you um, and I will talk to you guys in the next video see you later say bye Genesis bye say bye bye guys <laughs>